Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And I want to talk about a few things today, okay? Um, one of the things that I want to talk about are the scammers on the dating apps. Because it's a playground for scammers today on the dating apps, you guys. This is why I've said time and time again, try to stay off the dating apps. Now, I know it's hard. I know there's not a lot of places to meet people today. And most people are meeting online. But if you have to meet somebody online, try to do it on some place that's not a dating app. And a lot of people are going to sit there and say, but why? You know, it's all the same. It's not the same, okay? It's not the same. These scammers, okay, they're all over the place, granted. But dating apps is where they target a lot of people. Because why do they target people on dating apps? Because... They know that people, not everybody, but people are desperate to meet somebody. So already they know you're on a dating app and you're desperate to meet somebody. It's not like a scammer that hits you up on social media, on Facebook or something like that, that doesn't really know your situation. They know you're on a dating app and you're dying to meet, not dying, but you want to meet somebody, okay? So already they know you're hungry to meet somebody because why else? You're on a dating app, right? I've talked about this before and and I've said what I had to say with regard to don't think of dating apps the way they were years ago because I'm telling you about five years ago when you were on a dating app, it was completely different than today. Five years ago, yeah, it was a lot easier to meet somebody, okay? But now everybody that is a scammer has flooded to the dating apps. And on top of that, the dating apps are also a playground for hookups, okay? We talk about game all the time. What is game? Game is when, like for instance, if we're talking male to female, it could be partner to partner or the other way around. Basically, it's somebody trying to manipulate you to get some kind of benefit off you, which most of the times is sex and in other times could be money. So I'm going to talk about the scammers first of all, okay? Here's the deal with the scammers, you guys, all right? They're going to target you, all right? And who do they generally target? They target somebody who looks vulnerable, all right? It may be a divorced person with kids. They may realize, okay, this person is divorced. They have kids. It's not. It, it's a lot harder when you're divorced and you have children to try to meet somebody than it is for somebody who's younger and single. So they're going to go for somebody that they think they're going to get something off of, okay? So keep in mind when you go on a dating app, depending on your situation, and especially if you're a divorced parent, you are going to be you're going to be a fucking target for these people, okay? So what they're going to do is they're going to come on strong. They're going to love bomb you. First sign, first sign, somebody could be a scammer, is they sound too good to be true, okay? They're going to constantly flatter you. Um, They're going to be, they're going to shower you with attention and you're going to think, wow, they're really into you and everything. They may get on the phone with you, Um, talk to you on a regular basis. This is how people get fooled, you guys. And in the beginning, it's very hard to tell, is this a person that's a scammer or is this somebody that really generally likes me? But you have to ask yourself, why would they like you so much if in the beginning they don't know who the fuck you are, okay? Um, They're only seeing a couple of pictures, but they don't really know who you are. So when you start talking to these people in the very beginning, you have to be cautious. And it doesn't just have to be about scammers, you guys. It's with anybody. You're putting yourself out there, all right? You're putting yourself out there on a dating app. You don't know who that other person is on the other end. They could have phony pictures or they could have a criminal record. They could be a pedophile. They could be in another country trying to scam you. There's a million and one different things that could be going on. So in the beginning, you have to move slowly, okay? Move slowly. And one of the things that is another red flag is when somebody tries to move fast with you. When somebody tries to move fast with you, you've got to slow it down, slow it down, all right? Because if somebody doesn't have good intentions, 
they're not going to want to slow it down. They're going to want to speed up things because they're dying to get to that benefit that you have to offer. So what they're going to do is they're going to try to earn your trust. All right. This is what they do. They try to earn your trust. So one of the things you want to do is, like I always say, you want to get on their social media and check out their social media. That's number one. And see if they have a legitimate, you know, social media pages, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or something like that. Now, keep in mind, some of these scammers are good. I, I know people that have catfished people that had over 2,000 people as friends, okay? A good friend of mine, when he was looking at a profile, he says, oh, I know that's legit because, you know, they have over 2,000 friends. And I said, don't be fooled by that. Don't be fooled by that because there's some people that have catfish profiles that fill up, that have been working on these catfish, catfish profiles for years sometimes to make it look like a legitimate uh, page, all right? This is why I tell you, when you start to get to know somebody, try to find out what that person's full name is and do a background check on them. See where they're from. You know, Google them. There's background checks to see who these people are. You got, you got to, you have to do this, you guys, because if you're not meeting somebody through a close friend or a family member, or somebody that you could trust, or somebody that really knows somebody, you are you don't know who this person is. So you got to do your due diligence and find out about who this person is. You've got to see how many pictures they have on their profile. You've got to see if they have maybe one profile picture, and then the rest are like scenic pictures. If they don't have a profile picture, that is a huge red flag. Don't even bother. Delete block. Delete block. Because they're either a cheater, they're either married in a relationship, or they're hiding. So never, ever bother with anybody who will not put a, um, a Facebook profile, okay? Will not have themselves as their, as, uh, not even just Facebook, on a dating app, will not have their picture as the first picture that you see. See, a lot of them, what they'll do is they'll put like a picture of their dog, they'll put a sunset picture, and then they'll have um, maybe one picture of the catfish profile or if it's a cheater, they'll have one picture later on because they're hiding in case their spouse is looking for them on that dating thing. So, you know, you want to make sure that they have their picture right there as their main picture. Now, I'm going to go into more about scammers. Here's the deal with scammers, you guys, all right? It's, it's basically common sense. Basically common sense. When you start talking to these people... You know, in the beginning, they're not going to show their hand. In the beginning, they they may ask you questions about yourself. You may think that you have somebody that's real, that somebody's genuine and everything like that. But here's what I tell you. If they bring up any kind of questions about your financial situation, I mean, this should be common knowledge and you guys should know this already. Anybody asks you what you pay for rent, you know, is that your own place? Do you own it? Um you know, what kind of job do you have? How much money you make? Uh, what kind of car you have? Anybody asks you any kind of questions like that, they are trying to size up your financial situation. And no, rule number one is you don't tell them anything. You don't tell them anything about your financial situation, okay? You don't trust somebody for at least a year, okay? And then you don't trust anybody until you don't give anybody money unless you're married to them and you've known this person a while, okay? It's like I told you in prior podcasts, you know, some scammers will wait six months a year before even asking you for a dime, all right? This is why background checks are so important. This is why you find out about their exes, who did they date? Why did they break up? What was the dynamic of their past relationships? This is what tells you what the future relationships are going to be like most of the time, all right? Because the greatest indicator of future behavior is prior behavior. This is why I tell you about all this, you guys. But let, let's get back into the scamming thing. Number one, 
Okay. If you've got to be on a dating app and everything like that, you've got to look at this person. You've got to check out their social media. If they give you some kind of BS and say, well, you know, I don't have social media or anything like that. That is a huge red flag because everybody and their uncle has social media today. All right. And if they don't have social media today, they're hiding something. All right. There, there are very rare, rare cases where somebody may not have social media at all, but this is a red flag. So you don't bother with somebody like that. The other thing is a lot of scammers are going to try to get you over to WhatsApp, which a lot of international scammers try to do is get you onto WhatsApp. That is another red flag, you guys. All right. So it's like this, you guys, when you start meeting somebody, when you meet somebody, you want to check out everything about them. You want to see where they live, how long they've been living there. Are they solid in their job? Are they financially struggling? Okay. Are they always borrowing money from somebody? You know, a lot of scammers, what they'll do is, you know, they won't come out and ask you for the money, but what they'll do is they'll play the victim. Okay. They'll say, oh, I, you know, I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent and everything like that. You know, uh, I'm having a hard time, you know, with the pandemic or whatever, whatever sob story they're going to give you. You, you, you just say to them, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. It's not your problem to have to try to help them out. Okay. And especially if you don't know this person or you're not married to this person, you're under no financial obligation to help this person out. I don't care how fucking nice they are to you. Of course, they're going to be nice to you. All right. But you know what? They shouldn't expect any money from you whatsoever. And whatever, you know, they want to cry or whatever about, you know, uh, uh, you know, can you help me out with this? Or can you help me out with that? Or, or anything like that. No, no, flat out. No. Okay. And that's a red flag that you should not bother with somebody like that. The other thing is like these people that try to, you know, pull this business with the, the scamming when they're in the military and stuff like that, where they, you know, they say, oh, you know, I'm overseas and everything like that. I'm going to send you money. I can't deposit it in a bank over here. But if you could deposit it there, that happened to a girlfriend of mine. All right. And some guy sent her a check that was written out for like $2,000. She went to the bank to try to deposit it. And the bank told her it was a scam. Okay. They flagged the check because what they're going to do is they're going to try to, um, have you deposit it into your bank. And then what happens is the check goes bad. And guess what? You're liable for that $2,000. It comes out of your account. And even if you don't have $2,000, you're going to be responsible for that $2,000. So never, ever deposit any checks or anything that somebody gives you and says something to you to the effect of, oh, you know, um, I can't deposit it here. I'm overseas. No, sorry. Find some other sucker. Okay. Cause I'm not doing that. All right. You and I, we're not married. We're not mixing money. That's it, okay? I'm going to tell you a story of, of a, a situation of another friend of mine who met this dude on a dating app, all right? And this guy, you know, he tried to make like he was a professional basketball player. He um, used to play overseas and do basketball and everything like that. And he told her, oh, he's able to get, you know, the new iPhones and everything like that, and that he could put her on a plan and get her a brand new iPhone and it wouldn't cost her anything. And he wanted to meet her over by um, T-Mobile, right? He wanted to meet her over by T-Mobile. So she's like saying to herself, you know, this is too good to be true. That's your first, in, you know, your first sign. This is too good to be true, Okay. So she was almost going to meet this guy down at T-Mobile and she thought like he was telling her, oh, you know, you don't have to give me an account number or anything like that. Just bring your phone or whatever. Well, there's a whole scam about that because she went to some of her guy friends and they said, watch out. That is a scam. They're going to swipe your phone or somehow what they do is they take your phone um, and he's got a friend over there at T-Mobile. And what it's going to do is it's going to charge your account back at another carrier 
for that brand new phone. All right. There was a whole scam with that. So this is what I'm saying. Do not get involved in any kind of crap like that where somebody offers you something and it seems like, oh, you know, it's a great deal or anything like that. No, no, no business deals, no new phones, no deposit money into your account. No. Okay, so I need to make you guys aware of anything like that. Your biggest red flag is if they bring up anything about money, businesses, um, you know, we should start a business together, we can get grants together, we could get this together, or they want to have you co-sign on a loan or anything like that. No, no, big N-O, okay? So you have to, you know, you got to be smarter than that. This person is there to date you. They're not there to do business with you. This is what you have to keep in mind. You don't do business with anybody unless you're fucking married to them, okay? And if you get married to somebody, you've known that person a while and you know that you could trust that person. So one of the biggest... um flags, you guys, is when somebody is talking to you and they're talking about any kind of, you know, anything with regard to trying to do any kind of business thing with you. Like I said, starting a business, taking out a loan uh, or anything like that. No, either flat out no. Okay. Because you cannot trust that. And this is what they try to do. They try to earn your trust. This is what scammers do. They're going to try to earn your trust. So that's what you have to be aware of. They're going to be very nice. They're going to love bomb you. They're going to shower you with attention. They're going to be calling you night and day. They're going to, sh- they're going to show you or try to manipulate you into thinking they're like, head over heels in love with you. That's why I've done these podcasts about the difference between lust and love. Love is not something that's instantaneous. It's not. It's something that grows. Somebody can't love you if they don't fucking know who you are and seen you in your good, bad, and ugly, all right? They can lust you or they could try to pretend to love bomb you because they want something out of you, but they do not fucking love you, all right? And if anybody starts talking to you and says anything, starts saying they love you after a week of knowing you, you got to put that antenna up and say, "Uh uh-oh, ding, ding, uh, ding, ding. They're talking about how they love me. Why do they love me? They don't really know me that well. So use your common sense. Either they're they're somebody who could be controlling, because controlling people do that too, you guys. Controlling people come on really strong, really fast, all right? Or they could be somebody that are, is after some kind of benefit, which is usually sex, or in this, this case that I'm talking about, is a scammer, all right? So when they move really fast, that is another huge red flag. Now, another thing I want to bring up is this. When you start talking to somebody, right, and you've had a few conversations with them, right, and you're thinking everything's great, The next step is you want to do a video chat with them, okay? Now, keep in mind, some scammers will get on a video chat with you. Some will and some won't. Anybody that won't get on a video chat with you, red flag, they're either in a relationship or they could be a scammer or something along those lines. You should just delete block, delete block. There is no exceptions to that. So you want to make sure, even if it's a five-minute video chat, you don't have to be on video chats for a long time, but you want to see what this person looks like. You want to see if it matches up to their social media profiles. You want to see if the name that they give you matches up to the pictures, okay? It's all about networking and seeing, you know, does it all add up? One other thing I need to make you guys aware of is if you're dealing with somebody who's a very good scammer, okay, they may put somebody else up to the video chat. In other words, let's say it's a guy and he's dealing with a female, okay? And maybe this female, you know, she could be domestic or she could be overseas. They could put somebody else up to the video chat that they have, have these women that work for them that get on that video chat with you. But what you should do is when you video chat with them, you should call them out at random times, and say, oh, let's do a quick video chat. Oh, I want to see you on video chat. Not planned out video chats where they can get somebody else and get up to that video chat and video chat with you. You want to do it. You want to catch them off guard, 
Okay. Like in other words, let's say you always talk to them on the phone. You want to catch them off guard and say, turn on your camera. Come on, let's do a video chat real quick. And you want to do it at different times to see if it is, if they will do it. And if it is the same person, Okay, if they keep making excuses, oh, I can't, you know, I'm at work. Oh, I can't. It's, that's a red flag. That's a red flag. All right. And you need to be aware of that as well. So let me just sum this up in, in you know, basic terms here, you guys. Try to stay off the dating apps. If you got to go on the dating apps, the, another thing you might want to do is go on the paid dating apps, you know, because you'll have you're still going to have scammers on the paid dating apps. Don't think that you won't, okay? They venture out everywhere. You even have players on the paid dating apps as well because they get tired of the free apps and running their course there. They will pay sometimes to go on the paid apps, but you have a better shot of meeting a genuine person on a paid dating app than you would on a free dating app, okay? But you still gotta be careful, remember that. You still gotta be careful because you have the scammers and you have the players on the paid dating apps, but you'll have less of them than you would on the free apps. So remember that. And then the other thing that I wanna bring up is, like I said, when you first start talking to them, find out their name, Google their name, do a background check, find out where they lit, where they work, where they live, okay? And check out their work. Make sure that whatever work they, they are doing, whatever, is legit, okay? Like if they say they work for a corporation, check it out and see if they actually do work for that corporation. If they say they're, they are, um, they're an entrepreneur, then you, you check out their business and you look into the business aspect of it and make sure that they're legit. legit. Another red flag that you're dealing with a scammer is that they can't show any kind of work history, Okay, if you look at somebody's work history, it's going to tell you a lot. All right, if they've been at a job for a long time, they're pretty much stable. If they've jumped around all over the place, that could be a a need for concern that maybe this person, you know, um, can't hold a job, isn't financially stable, or whatever the case may be. That could be a red flag as well. So, you want to make sure that this person is not financially struggling because if they're financially struggling, then that could be why they're love bombing you and trying to get something off you. Now, one other thing I want to bring up is this. What you have to do, you guys, is you have to look at yourself. You have to look at your situation. Who are you and what are you to them? In other words, if you're a 22-year-old young girl that doesn't have kids, Okay, generally a scammer is not going to target that. All right, a scammer is not going to target a 22 year old girl with no kids. A scammer is going to target the single mother who's got kids who maybe has a home or who's been at her job for 20, 30 years, or they're going to target target an older woman, okay? You see this all the time on TV about these scammers that target these older, older women or older, older men. It could go the other way too, all right? Because they know these people are desperate for love and they, they figure, oh, it's a lot easier to get something off them. You've got, when you start dealing with somebody, you've got to say to yourself, you know, um, what is this person's interest in me? If they're showing pictures and they look like they belong on Muscle and Fitness Magazine and they're looking really, really fucking hot and shit and you're overweight and you have a situation where you have six kids or this and that, but you have a nice home, you got to say to yourself, what is their interest in me? Okay, because maybe I'm out of shape. Maybe I'm not on their level looks wise, why are they so interested in me? Okay. Because they see your beautiful home. All right. Where they see that you're divorced and, and you have kids and they, they think like single mothers, especially are very desperate. They think single mothers are very desperate. So they may target them or you may get these guys that target single mothers because they're looking to move into their home. They figure, you know what, I'm not going to deal with these these young chicks that, you know, um, don't have anything. I'm going to deal with these older women because at least they got their own fucking place and I can move in there and I don't got to pay rent. 
all right? Or in some cases, you got to be careful if you're a single mom that you're dealing with somebody who's a pedophile that likes your young daughter or young son, all right? So you never move somebody in for at least a fucking year till you know them because you have these predators out there targeting single women, all right? They're targeting single women. I got to make you aware of that. And you don't bring these people around your kids. You don't trust them. All right. You got to think about your kids first. All right. And, um, you know, you got to know that person and date that person for at least a year before you think about any kind of way of moving in with them. You do background checks, everything. Because like I said, you've got these predators out there that are targeting single women. All right single moms, I rather. Okay. So like I said, with the scammers, look at them, look at their pictures, look at their scenario. Does it match up with your scenario? Are you guys kind of compatible? Is this person coming at you and you're compatible? Or is this person coming at you because they see something there with you? Okay. They see something there with you. Like you have in, in a different scenario, you have a lot of younger women, a young, young women, you know, that are in their 20s, early 20s. And you have these guys over 40, over 50 targeting these women on social media and going after these women. All right. Why? Because they like young women. All right. They may like somebody who's young and fresh. All right. So. You got to remember too, people lie. They may have on their profile that they're 40 and they're actually 50. This is why background checks are so fucking important. This is why background checks are so important too, to see if that person is married. You could find out if that person is married, you guys. Find out their name, track them through social media, Google them, find out their situation and, and see, is this person truly single as well? Because a lot of them are in relationships and are on the dating apps. I've said it time and fucking time again, all right? The reason I don't like the dating apps is because it's a playground for cheaters, all right? I'm not saying you can't meet somebody on a dating app. There's always that chance. But what I'm saying is it's it, it, it's a big, big weed out. It's a big, big weed out, all right? That's why I tell you, go join interest groups, take a class, you know, go to a coffee shop, try to network through friends, try to meet people through a job if you can. But try, you know, if you're going to do the dating apps, you got to have a lot of patience and you got to take your time and you got to really screen these people. This is what I'm telling you. All right. So you do all your background checks. You move slowly. You don't tell them anything about your financial situation and you see how it rolls out. And remember what I'm going to tell you now. Nobody can get over on you unless you let them get over on you. Okay, so even if you come across a scammer on a dating app and everything's going great the first six months and, so, and everything, and then all of a sudden they say, you know, I want to do a business. Let's do a business together and everything like that. You know, maybe they know you have good credit or whatever. Um, don't sign anything. Don't mix money. Don't cash app them. Don't give them money. Just say, sorry, I can't. You know, I don't do that unless I'm married to somebody. You know, we're, we're dating. We're not in a business relationship and keep that in mind. Dating does not equate to business relationship or mixing money. Okay. So that's how you have to go about it, you guys. And I hope that helps you. If it does hit the subscribe button, share, have a great day. Hi, you guys. I just want to make you aware that the Game Exposed podcast now has their merchandise available. You can check out the link in the podcast description. There's hoodies, there's sweatpants, there's t-shirts, there's cool hats. So go check it out. Link is in the podcast description. And follow Yaz on Instagram at dating underscore advice underscore Yaz. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. 
It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Thank you.